Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today's theme is Houston, we have a problem. All right, the story begins properly. Probably around 2005, when the person that originally started building the Fulker D7 um, ab abruptly stopped. Um, we don't know why. That's the thing. It's because I've, I've never met the, the first builder, um, so I don't know the background to it. I know as far as they got in the build was they got to the tail of the fuselage, um, which includes going pretty much from, uh, from the front of the cowling, from right about here where we just got done uh, taking care of the top of the fuselage. Uh, which was episode number six on, on my end of it, um, and just all the way to the back. So it, that was the relatively easy part. Once you got past the cover for the cockpit, um, the rest of the stuff was just, you know, pretty much glued together, balsa, glued in position, and that was it. Um, so that part after that, that part probably took on about an hour, two hours to do that. Um, but I think I knew where part of the problem may have been to the reason why the, the the person originally just decided to bail out of the build um and i'm going to show you because you can see right there that's the sub wing um i'm going to take the camera off the stand just to show you so anyway um this is what i'm believing i'm going to dig through the plans uh to see if i can at least get a little bit better indication uh, the planes told you that you had to put the, uh, here, let me just go ahead and walk you around. So as you can see, just right up front, this side is the way it should look. Here we go. And this side is not the way it should look. This is set up because this was built off the plans. So this should be 100% right on the size it needs to be. And with this being that much longer, I mean, we're looking at about an inch and five eighths longer uh, than it should be. This should be in about an inch and five eighths to be back inside this little, let's just call it the little bucket. Um, my wonder is because I'm going to see if there's anything, because there's nothing in the instructions that they want you to cut this axle to a certain length. They just tell you they want it an inch, excuse me, two and an eighth inches off so right here from the inside there we go from right here to the end they wanted between two and an eighth and two and a quarter inches um so my then this is my theory and my theory only i'm wondering if this was an axle for a third scale Fokker thrown into a quarter scale kit because even though that's actually pretty nice and broad and makes it really stable, um, yeah, these uh, it's, the Fokers weren't really like that. They didn't have a problem touching a wingtip to the ground. Um, so I'm going to go in. There wasn't any good enough uh, pictures uh, for me to look at, but if you can see, hopefully we can see relatively decent in this one here. Um, this is not splayed out as wide as this is. So I get a feeling I'm going to get the plans out and see how well, excuse me, this bend is in the, uh, in the wire. Because if this, because I got to have to take the whole thing apart. I've got to literally got to unsolder these things, wrap it, get it all cleaned up and see if these pieces, the bends aren't right. So I'm going to, I want to check the bends on this first and then see what we're going to have to do to make this fit because this is not supposed to be this wide it just pretty much tucks in right underneath this section from here to here so i'm going to find a better picture uh, that we can reference off of um, just to get just a, a little bit better view of what we're going to have to do to fix it so hence houston we have a problem so we're going to go ahead and instead of jumping into the wings, because that's what I wanted to start on today, uh, we have to jump in on this and get the front end of this thing straightened out. 
uh, before we even think about doing the wings. So, so enough talking, let's get back to work. All right, we've got it all set up on a workbench. We've got the plans out. We got the landing gear sitting on top of the plans. So for all of you who have never seen this before, two things. These things come pre-bent. Why are they bent that far out from this? You can see how if this was going to be coming down, Sorry about that, let's get that set up right. It's gonna be coming down, if this was bent down, it's gonna be really close to where this is gonna be. So this is the whole reason why this is too wide. So I bet you if we went ahead and lined this up just like this, and we come on over here to just like this, this point to this point, from the measurements that I took, should be right about one in five eighths of an inch. So let's grab the old ruler and see if we can read this the way we need to read it. And see how good my ciphering is. Pretty darn close. Alright, so we we're figuring I was about one and five eighths inches and I'm a little bit off. We're just a click over one and three quarter inches. It's actually not quite one and seven eighths inches, but this this is what we need to get that to fit the uh, the sub wing. So I'm going to go ahead, heat this up. So I'll get the vise over here, heat this up, both sides, unwind it. <clears throat> I could unwind just one side, but because these two wires, because they're identical, because they both have to be bent to match this, um, that's what we're going to do first. And then we're going to go ahead, <clears throat> sorry about that, go ahead and get ready to remount this. I will be putting marks on where this needs to be because we're going to have to cut this uh, because it's far too long. Um, so let me go ahead and get everything set up and then uh, we'll walk through uh, what we got to do. All right, we are happy. Everything is properly lined up. Just the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, so what I did is I came in and this stuff was so much easier to bend than I thought it was going to be. It's almost scary. I like it a little bit stronger than that. We have no cross bracing from this side to this side to help strengthen it up. The only thing we've got is we've just got our solder joints down here. So I'm going to go ahead and because that's the way it's supposed to look. Sorry about the bad lighting over here. I need more light behind me. That's the way that's supposed to be. So let me go ahead and get everything soldered back together again so we can call this done. So the only thing I have left to do on this is solder these things in. Let me get you, there we go. Uh, this will go ahead, this will get soldered to the axle going across and then that goes up into the bottom. Uh, and I can show it to you, but what this is gonna do is get screwed into place down there. So this can't rotate anymore. Once, uh, so once the subwing is properly aligned with the bottom wing so i can't do that until i get this on um, if you read the instructions because this is a flat surface right here and this top surface is supposed to be at zero uh just like the bottom wing not 100 percent sure but they say go ahead and then set it up i'll wait till i get the bottom wing in place and then because the front's going to come up to oh right about up in here somewhere which will cover this weird little gap uh, up to here and then back to here, I will get the incidence of attack, which is zero, supposedly. Uh, so it'll be from the leading edge here all the way to the trailing edge. So I'll get that angle and then we'll just go ahead and then we'll um, do the same thing. Um, you can do it through uh, measuring the cotangent of this to know where that's at zero. And then you can do the same thing to this. I'll bring the whole cotangent thing for those of you that uh, aren't up to snuff on uh, trigonometry. Um, I'll show you how to go ahead and do that.